Diggity Hackett. What's up, baby? What up, Greg? Staying warm, trying to get some of this weight off. I ain't got my stand. I got to do this show by hand. No, we working. That's how I started. Your boy, Edgar Belanga. Yeah. Unanimous decision victory yeah. against Alexis Angulo. Yeah. What was your thoughts on it? I mean, from the first round, I peaked a little bit of nervous energy. Um, the nervous energy, I think, came from because he knew he was in there with a puncher. It wasn't so much that he was in there with a, um, no disrespect to Angulo, but it's, it's not like he a, a, a current great fighter. He's a power puncher that's been in there with some good fight, fighters, and you know what I mean, he, proved, he definitely was proven. He proved himself. Hmm. But um, I think Berlinga was thinking too much into it. He started off jabbing. He looked real good. He had a little rhythm going in the beginning. But it was like once he, once he got touched a couple times, he got away from the jab. He started overthinking. You know what I mean? Um, one of the biggest things I think is going on with him is he, he got hung up on the power, which happens to power punchers. When you go 16 straight fights, 16 first, first round knockouts, you know what I'm saying? That's the only thing you're going to be really thinking about. Well, this shit easy. But what, he, what he's being reminded of is, is the such thing as levels. So because they moving him up in level, we starting to see the real Berlinga. But now, I'm going to say, honestly, he could be doing a lot better with these guys and be stopping these guys too, but he's being distracted. He's being distracted by the fame. He's hanging around some of the biggest Puerto Rican performers in the world. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stars. He got Fat Joe around him, the boy Bad Bunny. He got all these motherfuckers around him. That's that's like, they good, they good for your image, but they're not good for who you are in the ring. When you in the ring, you in there alone. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be an animal. That's what camp is for. But he's not focused. That's just what it is. Switching trainers didn't really make a difference. He looked like the same guy to me. He looked like he was trying some new shit. Like he tried to box, but it wasn't there. He don't trust boxing. He don't trust boxing because he got so used to attacking. You know what I mean? Just attack, 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 and overwhelming, overwhelming guys. So, you know what I mean? It got a little rough for him in there. Plus, like, Another reason I'm saying he not focused, every time you see him walk into the arena, he got his lady with him. Like, it's no it's no shade and there's no problem. That's how you live your life, but you gotta know how to separate the two. But you could you could clearly see it's affecting him in the ring because his IQ is like lower. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He in there with bigger and better fighters in it and it's showing. He seemed like he was kept getting hit with the same shot, the uppercut yeah. the kid was landing. Yeah. And it, if I had to point out something that I, I feel like is missing. He don't really pump that jab. Yeah, that, and that's what I just talked about a little earlier. Like, he he started off trying to use it. He got, I believe he got a good jab. I believe he got a nice strong jab, a sharp jab, but he don't use it because he don't trust it. All he want to hit you with is a big hook, big overhand, shit like that. I, and honestly, I didn't even really see him go to the body. He didn't go to the body. And, like, that's, an, and that's synonymous with Puerto Rican fighters, the yeah. left hook to the body. You gotta, and you got to slow your man down. So the fact that he wasn't going to the body, trying to slow the man down, you know what I mean? That was kind of getting to me, letting me know his head somewhere else. And um, it was just, I don't know, it was just tough to watch because it was round after round. Now, then at some point, he got caught with them uppercuts and them hooks you was talking about. He started holding. So that means you ain't been working on your inside game, fighting on the inside. Because like you said, you once you get caught with a big uppercut, you, you would think, you know what I mean? Hold up, I got to look out for that. Let me make sure I cover. I don't get caught with that shot again. Whether you turn it off, you're catching it, whatever it is, you're going to make sure you make the adjustment. But the adjustment wasn't being made because... He just wasn't in that headspace. So also what that means to me is the sparring that he getting ain't real sparring. You know what I mean? And even if y'all sparring, you ain't getting it in with motherfuckers. Like it ain't gritty work. It's probably that nice little at a nice little pace where he could do what he want. You know what I'm saying? But I mean that's up to him to figure out. He I feel like the kind of vibe I'm getting from him, he more so worried about image and he more so worried about people hating on him instead of just getting in the gym and, and doing what he do. Because there's other fighters around the world who's doing the same shit at a higher level. So it's no excuse. It's no excuse for real. You feel like the 16 straight first round knockouts yeah. sped up his level too fast? Because you know, yeah. a after a certain amount of knockouts, the commission starts to get funny, but you know, we don't want to put you in there with that guy. Yeah, you can't and get in there too easy it, every it time. It sped up his development, yeah. and he shouldn't necessarily be in there with that caliber of guy right away. And that's exactly why what you just said is exactly why you got to stay in the gym and you got to study because you're going to fight bigger and better guys. I keep saying bigger and better because them guys in the beginning was for you to knock out. Now let's give you a guy, Demond Nicholson. Uh, not the best record, but one of the best, you know, contenders at 68. You got to fight a guy like Demond Nicholson. Knocked him down, what, two or three, three times? Three times. But couldn't finish him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All right. We kind of, we kind of, we, we kind of laid off him for that fight because that was a good fight. Then he fought the boy. Uh, what is it? Coercis? Yeah, I, can, I can't pronounce like that. Yeah. pronounce his name, but a, a, a tough dude. Tough man. fight. 
I mean, I don't remember that fight too much. I ain't gonna lie um, to you. Then he forced Steve he not, Rose. Uh, Coercious knocked him down. Yeah. And had oh, him visibly okay. hurt. Yeah, that guy. No, yeah, I do remember that fight. That guy was tricky too. He was definitely a veteran. You know, I mean, he knew his way around the ring. He gave Belanga, Belanga some looks. And he did put him down. That was like seventh round. I remember that. Um, good fight. I mean, he just got to he got to get back in the gym. Changing trainers, I don't really think was the best thing for him because one thing about Uncle Dre and them, they raised him. They know him, so they know when he on his bullshit. They know when he, you know, what I mean, when he working hard. They, they know. When, all right, get with you. All right, back. They know. They know when he um. When he pulling back, they know when he picking it up. So, you know what I mean? He, he might want to humble up and go back home. You know what I mean? Because cause at this point, when people get calls from a guy like Berlanga, they be so excited to work with him. They'll let Berlanga tell him anything and do anything instead of just like, yo, you ain't working hard, bro. You want some bullshit. Or you're not studying. You're not working on what we working on. And you just doing what you want. Instead of checking him, you know what I'm saying? They're going to let him keep doing what he's doing. So that's why he's going to keep having results like that unless he go home and get checked. Got to go see Uncle Dre because Uncle Dre know him. Cause a motherfucker like me, he wouldn't be able to stand a motherfucker like me cause I'm on his ass and I won't let him breathe. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna do shit your way. You're gonna do it the way I asked you to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's, be and that's because I don't want you to look bad. You feel me? All right, so what do you feel? Like, if you was his trainer, if yeah. he just brought you in, what's the first thing that you're adding? First thing we doing, we're going back to them legs. We're gonna, we're gonna get him in shape, go back to them legs. Second thing we doing, we're getting back to that jab, that head movement, setting up his shots. Um, letting him know it's more about boxing than power. You know what I'm saying? We're going to put some shit together. We're going to work on his combinations. We're going to work on sitting down on the inside, keeping that chin tucked, giving me a good angle, making sure you ain't letting them uppercut slide up there and get sneaky. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot you got to work on with him because it's a lot he got away from. It's not that he don't know. He just got away from it. You know what I mean? Okay. Sounds good. Real Who sure. do you want to see him in the, in the ring with next? Not moving him too fast. A guy that he can learn something from but also look impressive. I don't know. Because we talking about 168 pounds. Anybody can make you look bad at 168 pounds because that's a puncher's weight class. You know what I mean? So I can't really think of a name off top to give him. Because listen, be, let's be real. He's 25 years old. We just gave you a 38-year-old man. Not a old. He not old, but he was there for you to beat him. But you ain't step up. He won, but I didn't think he won that fight. You know what I mean? He showed too much. Then he tried to bite the ball. Like, shit got real in there. That's letting you know the shit getting real. I mean, you try to bite somebody. What you doing? Why you do that? I'm saying. Facts. Frustrated. Hey guys, wanna win some money? Bet US Sportsbook, the best online sportsbook there is. Click the link and put the promo code YSM2022, and you'll get a 125% deposit match. That's YSM2022. See you there.